draw us to you tonight. You said that no one seeks you or comes to you or desires you except you draw. Father, thank you for drawing us here tonight. That your draw was greater. To You worked a greater draw in us towards you than other things. Thank you for that. Because you desire to meet with us. Thank you, Father. For deposits and just heaven's order in our lives. Heaven's order and understand just an understanding and an application to our days a joy and a hope that's set before your people having met with you tonight. We honor you tonight. In Jesus' name, we honor you. Have your way. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Go go ahead and grab a chair tonight. You know, so much of worship, um, it's the expression of your heart, but so much, so much of it is the use of words um, that orders our steps. It orders our life. Our words, like the Bible tells us in James, they steer our life. And so much of, of worship is about uh, positioning us through our words before him, um, for him to do a work, uh, for us to empty maybe of ourselves things that need to be emptied so the right things can be placed in there. And um, I just tonight, uh, I wanted to take a second. Pastor Evan's going to be ministering here uh, in, a, in, a, in a little bit. Um, but I just felt it was important to go to Ephesians chapter 1 and make a prayer over our own eyes. Maybe you've heard um, Ephesians chapter 1 or Ephesians chapter 3, prayers that Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus. And maybe um, maybe you haven't. We're going to read a, a portion there. But maybe you've heard somebody maybe tell you when you don't know how to pray, here's a great way to pray for someone. You know, you might pray Ephesians 1, 18, that the eyes of your under, their understanding would be enlightened and they would know the hope to which they've been called, that they would know. Like, But how about for you to know? How about for you to have a hope, a a confident expectation of good concerning the call of God on your life, who who made you and formed you and fashioned you and, and made you by design and gave you a destiny to fulfill his purpose. Did you know that's what your destiny is? That's what your design is? Destiny, design, that it's to fulfill his purpose. And it would be great for you and I to have a hope, a confident expectation of good concerning that which he's called us. And so Ephesians chapter one, I want to read it. And then we're, this is out of the Berean study Bible. It says this, and this is Paul. He started in verse, um, verse 15. He said, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, he said, I've not stopped. I've not stopped giving thanks for you. So he's saying this, I heard that you got born again. I heard that you gave your life to Christ. I heard that you became a new creature. This is good, but it's not the end. I, I, oh, I'm so glad you came to church on a Wednesday night. That's so cool, but that's not it. There's more. There is your destiny. You're, there is what you were created for. And it's important, Paul's saying, it's important that you would know it. And that you wouldn't just know it, but it would have, be a drive and a hope that is set before you. And you would be able to endure things. And you would know that, that you have an inheritance when it seems like there's not this. And you would know there's power when it seems like there's, that you're, in, you're incomplete in an area. You would know these things. 
because you got to know the hope to which you've been called so that you can fulfill your destiny, which ultimately is to fulfill God's purpose. And so I wanted to do this and then I wanted to share something with you that I'm actually going to be sharing just a little piece at at leadership, our leadership. We have a leadership team uh, meeting uh, on Friday night. What is a leadership team? It's those that are our coordinators and leaders at Beyond Church. You know, you can, you can always become a leader too, if you want to, you know, you'll serve. (laughs) That's what it looks like um, in just greater capacity because um, the Lord spoke this to my heart. I wasn't going to share it with the congregation. Um, And the Lord said this really clearly. uh, You may not be responsible, but you will be accountable. Have you ever thought about that? I'm not responsible for that. Well, you may not be responsible for what I'm going to share, but you are accountable. Sometimes it's easy for us to say, oh, I'm not, that's not my responsibility, but it is your accountability. In other words, and so this is important that what, I, what I'm about to share for a moment that you know that you're accountable. I'm accountable. We're, we are accountable because we are the message. We are God's design to bring the message of Christ in this earth. I was talking today, uh, uh, actually with Mona for, for a moment before order of service, and, and you know how you know how a nation is changed when the church is built up you can't confine people to something you can't tell somebody but the bible says in ephesians 4 that when we come together and we are equipped for our own works of ministry that the body of christ is built up see what happens when the body of christ is built up uh, the people come underneath the Lordship of Jesus Christ and, and then God can have his way in their life. And when it's God's way, then this is what so many people are wanting is God's way, whether we know it or not. When we talk about the Constitution or we talk about this or we talk about Bill of Rights, we talk about this, things that were founded on like God's word. They want God's way. But here's how you get God's way. You build his church. How do you build his church? You, you get equipped so that you're ready to fulfill your works of ministry or fulfill your destiny, your design, or use your gifts, your graces, how God designed you to bring about his purpose. And that is that people would find Christ. That's why Jesus came to make a way back to the father. We're still on this mission. It hasn't ended. It is the hope of our calling and everything you and I need has been provided. But it's important that you know your purpose, you know the picture, the hope of your calling. Because there's endurance in a place of knowing. When I know that they're working on that stake, it's all right, I can wait. You know, when I know, it's when I, do they turn my order in? Are the cooks working on it? Oh, has my order been turned in? That's when I'm a little impatient, right? Look here. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your love for all the saints, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I I know you got born again, but there's more. He says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. There's things that you need to know that you can't learn right here. And in this time and in these days and with all these extra words that are around and all these extra reels that are around and all this extra uh, distractions that are around, we're going to talk about some of this on Sunday, but all the, some of the distraction, not like bad things, but just things that are filling us and keeping us from pursuing our purpose or pursuing our destiny, finding out what the hope of our calling is. We're filling our head with so much stuff and we're becoming led here when looking for everything, even the things of God here. When we're supposed to be looking for the things of God here, that the eyes of our understanding, these are the eyes of my understanding. These are the eyes of your understanding. Sometimes we question even like the things of God and we question them from here up. But you can't ask if you want to really know, you need the question from here because he'll speak things to your heart that, that, you, that you may not want to hear or would have an argument here, but you know. Okay. That the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
the glorious Father will give unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in your knowledge of him. So there's something about knowing him that comes into this next verse. And I ask that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so you know the hope of his calling. So your knowledge of him is really precedes you and I having hope for our calling. The joy to fulfill what I see in my heart. Because if I don't know that he's going to provide for it, if I don't know him, and we're going to be going into a series coming up soon on the names of God, but if I don't know him as my provider, if I don't know him as my healer, if I don't know him as the one who's present, if I don't know him as the one who leads me as a shepherd, if I don't know him as the one who brings victory, if I don't know him as provision, if I don't know him as, as he tells me he is, I have no hope concerning, concerning a call, concerning a destiny. So my fulfillment can be stifled. And a church, let me just say, your fulfillment, how about his purpose? How about his purpose? How about having an affection for what he's an affectionate for? People. How about we become affectionate and, and let our lives be filled with affection? for something other than just things. But what is he affectionate for? People. I ask that our eyes, would, our heart would be enlightened and that we would know that hope of his calling, the riches of his inheritance that's for the saints and the surpassing greatness of his power to us who believe. Did you know there's power for those who believe? Do you know people need somebody to believe with them? Do you know that people need you to stay in your fight of faith and not quit so that you can do battle with them when they're in a battle? Because I can't battle with you if I've not fight, fought what I need to fight. There's power toward and for those who believe. Let's be believers. Did you know one of the greatest enemies of a believer is unbelief? It's what robs uh, us of promises and, 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 and people encountering the living God. And so I just wanted to pray this right here, the verse 17 through verse 19, over our own eyes. I wanted you to pray it over your eyes. I'm going to read it again and then we're going to pray it. Because sometimes um, when, I, when, when you're in the church or you're in something, you say, say this after me. It's like, what are you about to say? I'm going to give you $100. Like, I'm going to give you, okay, thank you. You don't know what they're going to say. And so it's really hard for you to mix faith and really engage, you know, re or release and say, I'm in agreement with, past with what pastor's about to pray when he might be praying something I really don't want to surrender my heart to. You know what I'm saying? And so we're going to read it again. And this is a prayer that we would pray over ourselves, over this house, over your children, but over you, okay? That the God, so we would ask that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give unto us a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation in our knowledge of Him. We would ask that the eyes of our heart would be enlightened so that we would know the hope, the confident expectation of good, of his calling, that we would know the riches of his glorious inheritance that's for us, his saints, and the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. And I know we could continue going on, but that's where I wanted to, I wanted to pray that over us tonight. I wanted to pray that over myself tonight. And so I just, uh, uh, the Lord says, if you ask anything according to his word, you can have it. So maybe you need some pictures, uh, pictures of expectation of good. Maybe you need some, maybe you need some power uh, in your life uh, concerning the promises of God. He said it. I believe it. That's it. Uh, he said it. I'm going to stay in that place. And the power is being released even toward, towards me right now to, to walk in the destiny and fulfill his purpose. Sometimes I'm thinking so much about my purpose and I miss the fact that my destiny is for his purpose, not my fulfillment. All right, so here we go. Ephesians chapter one. Father, tonight we ask you, we ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you, Father, to fill 
us with a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Father, that we would know you better. Show us who you are as you introduced yourself to us, that we would know you as provider, as healer, as victory. We would know you as uh, all powerful. We'd know you as the beginning, the end, the author and the finisher, that we would know you as you are. Father, let us see you in, as you are in ways that we didn't even know you before. Open our eyes. We ask the eyes of our heart would be enlightened and that we would know the hope, the picture, that we would know the picture, that we would be able to see what you've called us to. We would know the calling and we would know the riches or the equipping from you, from you, our Father. We would know also the, the, the surpassing greatness of your power towards us who believe in Jesus. Thank you for that tonight, for hope in your people, for eyes that are opened, and for a spirit of wisdom that supersedes all what was seen. We thank you for it tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want you to turn in your Bibles because whether you know it or not, you're a leader. You may not be responsible, but you are accountable. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. He didn't say only, if, like, if you, this is what you are. Whether you act like it or not, that's on you. You're accountable. You may not be responsible, but you are accountable. My, go, my, my heart would be that you would become not just accountable, because you are, but that you would say, I'm responsible. Because the res being responsible is your response. Ultimately, that's your will. Where, 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 that's my response. Somebody else holds me accountable. I hold me responsible. Okay? This is Paul, again, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7. He says this, I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace. I became a servant of this gospel by design, by my destiny, that God, God, you ever heard this, but God predestined? In other words, he designed you. He designed, he, the, it was his design that, that, that Jesus would come and die on the cross, that all men could be saved and come to the knowledge of him. This is by his design. And so Paul's saying here that I became a servant of the gospel by the gift of God's grace, his, his giftings, his callings, his, this was his design. Given, given me through the working of his power. Though I am less than the least of the saints, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. So what was, what was given to him? His, was given to him, a, the grace was given me to preach, to declare to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is what was given to him. This is what he's accountable for. This is what he's responsible for because this is I, Paul, a servant of Christ. And the illuminating for everyone, the stewardship of this mystery. Did you know that and there just puts you in that place of also being a message carrier? Did you know and, the stu and to illuminate to everyone the stewardship of this mi ministry. What ministry? Um, to preach the, to, to those that don't know and are without a covenant, the unsearchable riches of Christ. Did you know that's part of your, that's, that's, that's why you have that grace. What's your gifting? Well, I'm a good baker. Oh, that's awesome. You know what that's for? That's so you can help declare the unsearchable riches of Christ. What do you do? Well, I'm pretty good with, uh, with cars and nuts and bolts. Oh, that's so cool. God gave you that gift, that unsearchable gift for what? To preach what? The unsearchable riches of Christ wherever you're at. Well, what do you? Well I, no, well, well, I have this gift to kind of like decorate and paint and do this. And oh, that's so cool. God wants to use that by his design. It was his design to fulfill his purpose, to bring forth into this world. Because you understand, you, you're a, this is my responsibility to help preach the same way Paul did 
and illuminate to everyone what? The riches of Christ. So what is your design? I'm talking about coming here. We're coming. Ephesians 4 tells us we come to be equipped for what? For our works. Like beyond the, beyond the four walls. We are like beyond church is to not exist in a box. But it's, it's we're to be here on earth and in this world as in heaven. You know? And so, um, yeah. So that's just kind of important for you to hear too. To be a church that understands the grace that's given to me, the gift that's given. What is your gift? Oh, I'm a paramedic. Awesome. You know what you get to bring? The riches of Christ. Don't approach anything, any place that God has positioned you without his riches. Don't go through another day if you're selling it, whatever you're selling without carrying the riches of Christ. Do you know, you could, be, uh, you could be selling beer with the riches of Christ. Carrying the riches of Christ where people are looking for cores. Yeah. Because God's said, go, go for me in the highways and the byways. Go for me in this place. Go for me. You go, you go, and you go, and you compel them to come. Go with him. Go with his riches. Go with his power. Go with it. Amen? It's time that we just, we understand that I live for more than myself. But I was, I am truly by design. My children are by design. They're gifts, they're they're individuals, absolutely. For the glory of God. For the glory of God. And if we live that way, I'm telling you, whole families will be swept in to his kingdom. Marriage is restored. Uh, Sickness just defeated. I'm telling you, this is... But it's going to come because you you understand the hope to which you've been called. And when you understand the hope, what also comes with it with, is these words. With these words that come forth out of your heart. Because you see the picture, and when it's not that way, you say, Father, I thank you right now for what? The picture. And he puts it in you so he can get it out of you. This is the same reason that the enemy would love to put something in you so he can get it out of you. You know what? We're going to talk about this on Sunday. This will be, he wants to get idle words in you so he can get this out of you. Satan wants to get idle words in you, vain words in you about yourself. Just, just word like idle words. Like, you know, I'm not saying it's bad to pursue big bucks or whatever it might be. I love bucks. All right. I like big bucks and I cannot lie. All right. But when that's my conversation, that's all my heart beats for. He gets that in my heart. That's my pursuit. That's what my heart desires. He got this out of me. Satan actually got this right here. He immobilized me. He immobilized us because I'm idle because my heart and my, my heart is filled with idle things. Idle, not just I-D-O-L, but I-D-L-E. Like as in not moving. Not moving, not going anywhere. You, you ever felt like you've been caught in a doldrum? You know what a doldrum is? It's like a dead place. You can, it has no wind, no breath, no fresh air. It might be because the wrong things are, have filled our heart and we need to get rid of some of the idols out I-D-O-L's and stop and not be so idle I-D-L-E so that we can begin to move with the spirit of God again and see the power of God in our life and in the life of others thank you Lord don't let me go away for a couple weeks because you might have me come back you're accountable I'm accountable, but I'm responsible. I'm responsible. It's my privilege 
to serve Christ. It's my privilege. Did you know, telling on myself, did you know I've battled from time to time? Again, idle words, vain words that would fill my heart with what I could do if I did what I wanted to do. Or what if I like produce something, a self-production to go do my own thing? I, I battled that. I battled that I, I could go make this. I bat, I mean, it's been a while since that's been a true, like overcoming battle. Like, like really, cause, cause I kind of whooped that, you know, through Christ. But I'm telling you, what a privilege. I'm, I've actually moved to the place of what a privilege it is to get anything, to get anything and do what he's called me to do. It's, it's 180 degrees for me. What a privilege it is, Father, to serve you. Thank you, Lord. Ev, I got one more thing, and I'm doing it. And I want to, um, uh, this is concerning our offering. Because the enemy likes to make a big deal about finances right now. He likes to make a big deal about inflation. He likes to make a big deal and tell you what you can't do and what you can't do. Listen, you're not the producer. God's the producer. The moment I take on God's role, I feel stifled. I feel overwhelmed. I just, uh, all of what the, his promises go out the window because they're dependent upon me. Okay? You're not, you are not the producer. However, you are to be a sower and you are to be a waterer and you are to be a harvester. You look in the word, never one time did he say, make that seed grow. Hey, could you make that seed grow? Could you make sure it produces? No, he said, I'm watching over my seed. It's incorruptible, but I'm watching over it to make it perform. He even said, you know, um, the rain, as the rains come down from heaven, he even helps you on the watering. He said that causes it to bring forth and bud. What causes it? Heaven. He just makes sure you and I understand his role. But here, I wanted to, to, to um, talk to you tonight about giving. I haven't been as diligent as I should be talking to the church about giving. Haven't. Not that, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. No, no, not afraid in any, in any uh, maybe just thinking, you know. Um, but I, I need you to turn to Second Corinthians. We're going to look at the Word tonight, chapter three or chapter nine, Second Corinthians nine, three through ten. And I believe this will be helpful for you. This is something that that you can go home and make a decision on, and it just is, it'll be amazing for you to replace your or or position your faith in Him as the producer instead of you, because in this time. Uh, of where you see inflation and you see prices and you see this and you don't see that your maybe your paycheck keeps matching inflation like it just you know but how many of you know when the need goes up so does the supply because he's the producer okay but what does he supply what does he supply to you and me but 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 how does he supply because here's what i don't want to do because I could show you a picture of starving children in Africa or whatever and maybe manipulate you for just 26 cents a day or something like that. That's not how God works. No, we're going to look at how he works. Look at this. Says this. this is Paul, again, going to the church at Corinth. He says, but I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove empty but that you will be prepared just as I said. Somebody say prepared. Okay, so prepared. So before you come to church, okay? Let's just say this. Before you ever come to church, before you ever, before an offering message is ever made, God forbid that there would ever be an eking out of a nickel from your pocket. You know what I mean? Please, somebody has a need. Please, somebody has a need. So, you know, sometimes you're preparing to give is putting that $100 bill behind that, your license and you're, you're, you're prepared. You just know that I might need this and, you know, that Lord might want me to give. He might want me to sew. He might want me to take my kids out for ice cream. But I just know I need to have that $100 bill in my wallet. Okay, great. You're prepared. 
prepared just as I said. Otherwise, if the Macedonians came with me, verse 4, and found you unprepared, we to say, uh, we to say nothing of you would be ashamed of having been so confident. In other words, oh man, you weren't ready. Now how many of you know if you're going to plant a garden, there's preparation? There's always preparation to sow, isn't there? To sow. Think of, so I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you beforehand and make arrangements. So here's what he's saying. It's important that you and I, before we ever come to a time of giving in a service where we would bring our tithes and offerings to the storehouse, and we would bring our, bring, we see, giving is, tithing is not really giving. That's God's. Okay? But when I would decide beforehand, see, here's the power of deciding beforehand. When I sit down and I do my finances, or me and my wife sit down and we go over our finances, we decide beforehand and we look and we say, God provided here. My God. So there's, there's no manipulation. There's no like, okay, giving reluctantly. This is my decision beforehand. Before it ever comes to that time, I'm making a decision as to who is the provider. Oh, that's pretty good. When there was nobody trying to tell me what's right to do, and you probably better do that because otherwise you're, no, no. Pastor wasn't telling me if you don't do that, blah, blah, blah. Then, no, no. I'm saying, I'm tired of being, I, I don't want to be the producer. I'll be the sower and I'll do the harvesting, but you do your job. This is what's happening. So he went beforehand and made arrangements for the, he said uh, to visit you beforehand so you could make arrangements, preparations to sow for the bountiful gift you had promised. This way, sometimes we say certain things. Promise? We say things like, you know, yeah, I do that, but I don't do that. He, or I'm not ready to do that because of whatever, you know. Anyway, he said, this way your gift would be prepared generously and not begrudgingly. Verse 6, remember, remember this, whoever spares sowingly will also reap sparingly. So again, he puts you, you and I both in the place of what your role is, sowing and reaping. Be not mocked, do not deceive, God is not mocked. Sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. He's the producer. Okay? Um, or the seed is. What, and whoever sows generously will also what? So could some of your and my lack be due to the fact I have seed that is supposed to be sown? Is that possible? Could it be possible that if I give you the barrel of corn and you come to the fall and you wonder why you're hungry, could it be that that barrel of corn is in the pantry or was used to make some muffins when it was intended to sow so that God could breathe on it because you saw him as your source? This is the walk of faith. You know, faith should be exercised in our finances. Why? Because if I can exercise faith in my finances, guess who I can also exercise faith in? your finances. This is a fact. If you can exercise faith in your healing and you can stand and watch God move according to the word, his word to you, and you, I guarantee you, you can pray with somebody else and pray the prayer of faith. The Bible says the prayer of faith will heal the sick. But if I don't ever exercise my faith for my headache, but only all, as soon as I get a little, give me six Tylenol. Then, then my, my, my faith muscle concerning that area is weak. So I need to exercise my faith. So remember, whoever sows sparingly, reaps sparingly. Whoever sows generously will reap generously. It takes faith to sow. You ever seen the movie Faith Like Potatoes? You know, sowing potatoes when it looks like a drought, the only way to their mower is the, through the seed. I will just tell you that that's, that's for me too. The, the way to any more is through the seed. Thank you, Lord. Each one should give. This is, I love verse 7. Each one should give what he decided in his heart. Not what pastor said. What did you decide beforehand when you talked with the Lord and you said, this is what I have. What did you decide in your heart? That's what you should give. Not out of regret 
not because I showed you a puppy dog or someone that might go without food or talk to you about lights needing to be turned on or blah, 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 because I would never do that. And we're blessed. And you'll find that when you sow, you increase more and more so that provision is not a problem in this house. And as long as vision is casted, provision will come. As long as we're walking in what God's telling us to do, we're going to see it. So I, I'm not worried about, I'm not the producer. I'm a sower. I'm a reaper. This is for you. This is not about money in a, in a church account. This is about money and provision in your account. This is, make this super clear. And I'm not saying that just so you, I'm saying this is for your provision and moving you from the place of producer where you can't produce at the level of all these other things. And if you do, then you're adding a lot of sorrow with it. But the Lord would like to make you rich. It, the, let me say this. The Bible says the Lord would like to make you rich and add no sorrow with it. The Bible says. But the moment, the moment I move, the riches become my blessing instead of him my blessing, I've, I've stopped that blessing. Because that would not be a blessing. Now that would be a curse because now I'd walk away from the Lord my God. So you know how seeing the blessing, you know how to continue to walk in the blessing? you got to con always continue to see him as the supply. But the moment I got enough and now I can rest because I got my bank, my, my pockets are full. Well, th th then the blessing ends. The blessing means with God, the curse is apart from God. The blessing ends. God can no longer bless there because from then on he'd be cursing. He, if I want to continue walking the blessing, I have to see him continually as the source. How do I continually see him as the source, as the producer? I have to see him beforehand and make up in my own heart, in my own mind, in my own decision and say, Father, thank you for this extra $20 that you gave me this lawn mowing job that I didn't know. I was, thank you for providing that way. So I take my kids off for ice cream. Thank you for providing. Thank you for providing. Oh, Father, thank you. You're so good. You're so good. You're such a good father. You're such a good father. Oh man, now I'm not, now I'm looking to him. I'm not looking to here. Let the blessing work. And you got to understand that the blessing, the way it was instituted always came from the father. You remember Abraham, you remember Esau and Jacob and I, I you remember the blessing. There was a blessing that was given by the father. The blessing still comes this way. It comes from the father. There's, and you know what the blessing means? The empowerment, the empowerment to prosper. Whoo, that's good. So when the father gives a blessing, I, when I, when he's my source, when I, when I make much of the birthright, when I am like Jacob, we're saying, I need you. I need the blessing. Esau said, I'm good. I'm strong. I'm tan. I'm buff. I'm tan. I'm your macho man. Like when you, when he, when he said this, he said, I can do it. But Jacob said, Israel, who became Israel, said, I need you. Man, that's a powerful statement. Here, I need you. I got to have you, man. I, Father, I got to have you. I got, this, is, this is covenant talk. Did you know giving is covenant talk? I got to have you. Like, I'm so dependent upon what you bring to me. What you bring. I'm so, Father, I am so dependent on what you bring to me. You bring, but you bring so much more than these dollars. You bring protection. You are a shield. You're a favor. You're, you're, you're one that's reaching my kids and, 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 and sending those across their path that I can't. I, you're, you're, man, you're so much. Father, thank you. So he goes on and says this. He said, but remember, whoever sows sparing also reaps sparing. Whoever sows generously also reaps generously. Verse 7, each of you should give what he has decided in his heart, not out of regret or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know how, why I'm a cheerful giver? Because I see what he gave me. You ever heard those little analogy when you give your kids a big bag of M&Ms and you reach your hand back behind the back seat? You know, actually it's like this usually. Hey, a little dad tax back there. Ah, oh, dad. Why is that? Because what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing what I'm giving. I'm not seeing what I've been given. That's the difference. And sometimes I'm not cheerful in giving because, because I've seen what others have been given. 
All right. But you don't know what they did to get that either. You don't know what those dollars cost them in exchange. Anyway, and God is able, listen, and God is able. Somebody say it. He's able to make all grace abound to me. So that in all things, in all times, that I would have everything that I need. Oh, that, that, I'm talking that was for me. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. So that in all things and at all times, you would have all that you need. And that you would be able to abound or run to every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad his gifts to the poor. He wants to give through you. He wants to scatter through you. So we got to stop looking even to our job as the source. I'm a sower. I'm a reaper. He's the source. He's the source. It doesn't say and ream or and whirlpool because uh, I don't think those are around anymore. Right? Or at least not in this town. Is there still a... There was, you remember, was it Reem that shut down or Whirlpool? One of them, maybe both, I can't remember. They shut down. One of them, should, they're not your source. He scattered to, abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. In verse 10, close, I'm going to close on this one. With my, now he who supplies, now he, somebody better underline that, circle that now. He who supplies, you could just underline now. He supplies. It's good to write in these things. You know? He supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. He'll also supply and multiply your store of seed and will increase the harvest of your righteousness. I love that. I love it. He goes on to talk about how you'll be enriched in every way. He'll, get, he'll make sure you're, you're taking care of what money can't buy. So that, so that through us, your giving would produce thanksgiving to God. That goes back to where we were at in Ephesians, where he talks about how Paul, he wants you and you also to steward the grace. You also to steward the mystery or the message of that riches of Christ. So um, that's a message on giving. It's important we know it now. It's important that we, we decide in advance what we're going to do. It's important because that's where I operate from my heart. But when I show the picture of the puppy dogs or the need of this or blah, 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 that's when you operate from emotion. We operate from affection. You got to understand affection and emotion are two different things. But it's, it's important that we decide from that place of our heart, not from the place of need or from the place of decide in advance. Now, if you want to be generous and have more than enough seed to give to every good work, then guess what? You decide in advance, I want to bring this, but I also want to always be available to sow because I believe that's part of my gift and my call to, 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 to preach the message of Christ. I want to be a giver. Well, great, because if you want to be a giver, he said he'll give to those who give. He'll give seed and he'll even multiply your seed so that great thanksgiving comes to God because you say, this is from God. This wasn't from Ben. This wasn't from Nate. When he, Hey, God just wanted me to... He wanted you to, but the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. God wants you to know that he's looking, he's watching. God wants you to know he had me ready in advance so that I could be. These, I'm telling you, he gets the glory. And there's great thanksgiving to God. What, what is that about? That's about you fulfilling your destiny and fulfilling his purpose that somebody would come to know him and give him thanks and praise and be grafted in and heaven on earth would actually come. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to pray over our tithes and offerings tonight. I know we do a lot of that online, but I felt like more than even just the receiving of giving tonight, it was, it was us going home and making those decisions. You know, sit down with your husband and your wife. And let's not talk about what we don't have. Let's talk about who's our provider. And if who's our provider, then let's talk about how we can provide. And let's say, you know what, Lord, you, you provide for us. And we're looking to you. 
And we're thanking that you that you you positioned me to sow and you positioned me to give or and to harvest. But Father, have it your way. Get yourself glory in this family. Get yourself glory in this house. It's for his glory. It's for his glory. Let's read our offering declaration. One of the things we've been talking about. This is a this is a letter from the heart which I'm going to be talking about Sunday morning. Letters from the heart. What's in my heart? What's in your heart? What are your prayers? What are your prayers? This is a prayer of my heart. We're going to, I'm going to just go over prayers of my heart. What have been your prayers? Has your heart been replaced? Is it holding where God can't move? Is your heart holding idle things where now my prayers are only for things? Or is my heart, what's, my, what's in my heart? You know, is your heart that your children would know the Lord, their God, that they'd have godly wives that would, and they would walk together for, and it, you know, when they come together, it would be like two flames becoming one for, for his glory. Just like, what does your heart crave? Where are your affections? But this is a letter of my heart, of the heart. And so this is how we pray. This is actually how we, you and I are to pray. We're to pray letters of our heart. What are the letters of your heart? What are the, what are the words? Father, today, we pause to reflect and just say thank you, Father. This is how this came. Father, I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you. And I want to recognize you as the source. You are the source of every good gift in my life. I could have been doing it my own way. I could have been going my own way and, and, and painting and, and signing that commercial deal and then making all these million bucks. I don't know if I'd have my wife. I don't know if I've had my children. I don't know if I would lay down at night. And who would be next to me or if I would be having, I don't know where I'd be, but I know because you led my life and you were the one that was, had good things in store for me. And I simply said, yes, that what I'm experiencing is from you. You are the source of every good gift in my life. And right now, I, I, I just want to agree with you. Wow, that's pretty powerful that he wants this for me. I want to agree with you, and, and I want to say that in this house, at, Be- at Beyond Church, where, you, where you've called me, where part of my des- de- de- destiny to fulfill and design and all the, with, among all these people to fulfill your purpose. I, I, I cut, this, is a, this is a truck ride. This is an hour and a half truck ride to fill up a weed eater or get a weed eater. This is, the, this is, this is just a prayer of the heart. The Lord said, would you just pray that every Sunday? In this house and in my house, that there's provision for your vision. God, whatever you want to do with me, that you can do it. That I would I would not be limited in any way. Like this, in no way, Lord. Lord, in no way would I be limited. If you tell me to go, I'll go. I'll go. If you tell me to buy this, I'll buy this. If you tell me to send them, I'll send them. In no way. If beyond churches to send those people there, if they're to do this here, if they're to build that there, if they're to even, then we're going to do it. Why? Because we're in agreement with the provider of this. We, we got the source. And in no way will we be limited to serve our generation. We purpose, I purpose to be an extension, Father, of your goodness so that others would experience you. Right now, I'm asking you, if there's any place in my life where I'm eating my seed, if there's any place in my life where what's going on in my life, it's, it's contrary to your plan and to your will. If there's any place in my life, Father, I'm asking you right now that, that we be an extension of your goodness so that others would experience you. Right now, we ask you for wisdom and ask you to direct our steps into a place, how? Of overflow. And we talked about this with that water bottle. Sometimes the place of overflow is this. Sometimes. I, or it could be, it also could be this. Is that overflow? Yeah, it also could be. It's just, what is your direction, Lord? What is your direction? And then this declaration, my life our lives because it's not about me our lives will bring increase to your kingdom our lives will fulfill your purpose and I will fulfill the destiny 
for what you've created in me. And you will be glorified and many will come to know Christ because we were responsible. I want to be responsible. I don't want to bury something. This should be invested for his glory. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you tonight just for your words that are spoken to our hearts. Thank you for answers that I believe that even much of what was spoken tonight was answers for us to replace our, our trust and our affection upon you, our King, our Lord, our provider, our Savior. Father, we're asking tonight for increase, but not just of material things. Father, we're asking for increase of affection, that we would love the things that you love, that our love and our affection would be set upon you and what you love. Father, tonight we thank you for the seed that's sown here. But Father, you said that here on earth men receive tithes, but there in heaven you receive them. So Father, we thank you for the blessing, the empowerment to prosper, the, produce, the production on the seed that's sown tonight. We honor you. We say thank you for taking such good care of us and meeting our needs according to not my job, not my economy, but according to your riches and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So the reiteration in the closing of tonight, Jeremiah chapter 1 and Isaiah 61, it's words to this house, it's words to you, who God knew, he placed you, stationed you, man, I'll tell you, for his glory, for your, uh, you know, he wants your joy to be full. Now the word of, this is like Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before... <clears throat> I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. And I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, the Lord God said, but the Lord, Lord, he told me, do not say I am only a child. Do not say I'm only this or that. For everyone I send, for to everyone I send, you must go. Or for to everyone I send you, you must go. And all that I command you, you must speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, declares the Lord. And this passage has had a lot of life in it. Isaiah 61, to me, as of late, you might... You might be familiar with it more in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus said now the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel but here's Isaiah and I wanted to read it in full the spirit of the Lord is upon us I'm gonna say us instead of just me because this is a declaration um, concerning what God's wanting to do here on the earth now the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, and He has anointed us to preach the good news to the poor. 
He has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted. He sent us to proclaim liberty to captive people. He sent us to proclaim freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of God's vengeance. He sent us to comfort the mourn or to comfort all who mourn. <laughs> he sent us to console the mourners in Zion and to give them a crown of beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for a spirit of despair. You know, you can put something on somebody where they have no place to pray. You can put on them a garment of praise. Glory to God. How? The Spirit of the Lord is upon us to do that. The Spirit of the Lord, the power of God, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is upon you to give somebody a garment where they're depressed and suicidal. I don't know what to say to them. That's all right. Just bring the Spirit of God. Just bring it and put it on them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release a spirit of praise over them, a garment of praise that would just take. Come on. Whoo. Ah, so, why? So, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, and that He would be glorified. When someone's healed, when someone's delivered, when someone's set free, when someone's brought out of a pit and set up on, feet upon a rock, what happens? They are a planting. They are a planting of the Lord because somebody sowed. Because somebody sowed. They're a planting of the Lord. And guess who gets the glory? He is glorified. And now they'll rebuild the ancient ruins and they will restore the places long devastated. The church cannot stay here and it can't it, the hot this house can't hold the church this house can't hold the plans of God this building the walls cannot hold the plans of God the church the people that God wants to restore and set free they're going to rebuild cities this is bringing kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven not just in our little Christian box but in all of Alma that the influence would be here on earth as it is in heaven, in our schools as it is in heaven. Why? Because we're stationed there. And by design, by destiny, we understand the hope and the picture to which we're being called. And because I have the hope, now my prayers are fueled with hope. And now God can move and my feet are ordered by my words. Oh, glory to God. And now people are swept in and now they're hooked alongside of you, building the wall and the cities with you. And they're using their graces and their gifts and their painting or their whatever it might be, psychology, whatever it might be, to do what? To rebuild and to set right, to restore the places that were devastated. Who's the devourer? Who comes to steal, kill, and destroy? He's talking about rebuilding what the enemy destroyed. They will, re, uh, they will renew the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. So, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, what about a generational curse? See, they will renew the desolation of many generations. Strangers will stand and feed your flocks, and foreigners will be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you will be called the priests of the Lord. You know what that means? You know what a priest was? It was the go-between, between you, between the people and God. And he said, you're going to be called those that came in, you were the one that stood in the gap. You're the one who, oh, but, but that was by God's design. Oh, thank you for, thank you for placing me here. Thank you for, oh man, this is good. And they will speak of you as servants of our God. That's what ministers, speak of you as ministers, servants of our God. And you will feed on the wealth of nations and will boast in their riches instead of shame. My people will have a double portion. Instead of humiliation, they will rejoice in their share. This is Jesus quoting in Luke 4 out of Isaiah 61. I really believe this is why I was born. <laughs> oh, wait. wait. Wasn't that Jeremiah chapter 1? This is the reason that you were born. To carry the Spirit of the Lord. That's why we're here. 
Let's live on purpose. Wanna live on purpose? Nothing will stop you. Why? Because you understand the hope to which you've been called, the inheritance that is given to you, the power that is for you, the exceeding riches. You keep on reading and how he raised you up and set you far above. I mean, you just finished reading Ephesians chapter one, that prayer. But where did that prayer come from? Paul's heart. Did you know there's Ephesians prayers in you for your children? Did you know there's a pre Ephesians prayers in you? You know, prayers that came up and out by the Spirit of God, out of your heart, for, for the place that you work, that it would prosper, that it would emp be empowered, and that, the, that your boss who might not know the Lord in any way, you just to let him know that you've just been praying that this, your business and this business would be blessed and it would increase exceedingly. Whatever is in your heart, an Ephesians prayer, that's not, that, that always, in Ephesians prayer, they always bring into inheritance, his power, and your position. That's authority. That's, let pray with inheritance, be inheritance minded as a son and a child of God. Be power, the power of God, not limited to what I can do, and understand your authority. That when you release your words, all authority in heaven and earth, that Satan lost his authority when Jesus came and he gave it to you and me. So understand that when I'm praying that prayer, I'm not praying it from down here, but I'm praying it from afar above. And I know that when I release my the words that he from in agreement, just as Jesus said, I don't do anything except for I see the Father do it or hear the Father say it. So what am I doing? I'm tapping here and I pray from here. This is where prophecy a gift that's given to you and I, a spiritual gift, one of the spiritual gifts that, that people need to hear from the Lord when they're, and you would speak from here. If you want to speak from here into people's lives, which the Bible tells us to covet that we would, to desire that we would, begin to pray from here. You pray from here, in your private, in your own place, in your own place. Tell me what the school should look like. Tell me what your classroom should look like. Tell me what Alma should look like. Tell me the letter from the heart, then it won't, you, you'll be able to, what, read somebody's mail. Because it's not what you can do, it's that God is always looking for somebody to show himself strong through. Because people are so desiring, and when you're a yielded vessel, why? Because you've learned to write letters from the heart. Thank you for restored joy and fulfilled destiny. Thank you. I mean, you see people, you walk into church, we walk into church and you see somebody's heavy or you see something and it's not just a pastoral gift. It's part of being the body of Christ and being a brother and sister. You can see heaviness. You can see something. Father, how should I pray and stand in the gap for them? You know what he'll do? I'll tell you, we'll write a letter. It's, in, it's interesting, even kings, how they, how they work. They would decree a thing and there would be a herald. They'd write a letter, they'd sign, sign it, and it would be spoken so that it would come to pass. He still works in the kingdom. He still works in kingdom ways. Write the letter. Write the letter. And then, when you do that, don't be afraid to speak on his behalf. That's one of the greatest things that keeps many Christians that know how to tap the heart, they know how to write and pray in, in secret, but the fear of what if keeps them silent out here. Can't stay just here. It's got to get out here. So encourage you with that. God bless you guys tonight. Um, we will see you Sunday morning. Um, carry the message of Christ who is, man, he is the anointing, the equipping, the empowerment for whatever somebody needs. We pray in the name of Jesus. Anyway, praise the Lord. We're going to be quiet. Father, thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for uh, just even as we go tonight. We thank you for just ministering to your people. Thank you that you even remind us what you said, those the little things that fit just perfect, that we, even sometimes it seems we, we, we can't quite get them back. I thank you for bringing them back to our remembrance to be written down. And, and not so they would only be written, but they would also be spoken. 
by your people so that you could have your way and that we would decree a thing and it would be established here on earth as it is in heaven. We give, we give you glory tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Dismissed.